In other news, former Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta, who is also an East African community facilitator and African Union peace envoy, is calling for urgent intervention in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Fighting between the Army and M23 rebels has flared again in the last week, causing hundreds to flee their homes. Kenyatta has been visiting the eastern part of the DRC to access the situation and cool tensions between the DRC and Rwanda. The DRC has repeatedly accused Rwanda of backing the M23, but Kigali firmly denies any involvement. Minutes before his visit to an IDP camp outside the city of Goma, a scuffle occurred causing panic and thousands of people to flee. Kenya's foreign minister said Kenyatta's work has been severely hampered by the unfolding humanitarian crisis in and around Goma. Well, Jaffa al Katanti is in Goma and joins us on the phone. Uh, Jaffa, welcome to the program. Jaffa, what is the latest on the fighting in the eastern DRC? Oh, we apologize. We lost contact with uh, al, al Kakanti there. Hopefully we'll get him back on the line a little later. Let's move on to a, another a story or another Zoom, should I say. We are joined by uh, Dr. Felix Ndahinda, a researcher and consultant focusing on conflict, peace, and justice in the Great Lakes region from uh, Tilburg, Netherlands. Welcome to the program. Now, uh, Kenya's former president, Uhuru Kenyatta, who's been in Goma, is calling for urgent intervention in the DRC. What kind of intervention is the former president talking about, and how can it be achieved? I mean, uh, we know that uh, the Kenyan president is in, in, in Goma as the designated mediator of the East African community, uh, which the DRC joined recently. Um, this is part of the regional heads of states' effort to bring their input in resolving the conflict in the DRC. So as much as we know, of course, we know that there has been already a wide range of global intervention and the regional bloc, as it were, of course, uh, has tried also to, to, to come into the game and play a role in, in ending the conflict in, in the DRC. We know that uh, when he was still president in June uh, this year, uh, he convened a meeting of the regional heads of, of, of states in which they adopted a Nairobi communique, which basically did kind of uh, uh, provide a roadmap for, 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 for resolving the conflict in the DRC. And that roadmap basically was a two-track roadmap one, they contemplated a political solution whereby the government of the DRC, through facilitation of the regional bloc, would facilitate, let's say, discussion, dialogue. There was a kind of a play on semantics here, but there was kind of a political settlement that was to be taking place through Nairobi process, what is known now as Nairobi process, with all armed groups, uh, the M23, but also the 100 plus many other armed groups in, in, in Eastern DRC. And next to that, there was a, a, a military, of course, a track where uh, the regional countries would send troops in Eastern DRC to stabilize the situation and, if needed, to combat the, those rebels who would not uh, subscribe to the peace, uh, peace settlement. Well, Dr. Felix Ndahinda, diplomacy still remains a priority to resolving the crisis in the DRC. But from your perspective, what else can be done? Uh, I think there is really quite a lot of need for investment in this de-escalation. Uh, there has been quite a lot of de-escalation, both within the DRC, but also at the regional level. We know that there are two sides of this conflict here. There is quite what I consider always to be an internal DRC conflict, which is between the government and armed, various armed groups in East Eastern DRC. M23 is the most prominent, most visible one today, but we need to always to keep in mind that there are more than 100 other groups which are very much active, some still even occupying spaces that are bigger than what is controlled by M23 today. So there is that need for the DRC, first of all, to treat that as a broader phenomenon that needs to be addressed in its breadth, including by looking at the current situation, but also at the factors that bring uh, groups to, to, to taking arms against the government. Uh, and the second, of course, there is the, 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 the regional aspect. Of course, there is quite a lot of uh, talk about the worsening relations between DRC and Rwanda, accused of supporting M23. 
But there is quite a, a different track as well, which is basically uh, many Congolese politicians have also been accusing quite many other, uh, other regional actors, especially Uganda, for example. The, the prominent uh, opposition leader, uh, uh, Fayulu, did specifically in his very recent communique yesterday accuse Uganda as well. So uh, there's that regional aspect of that as, as well, which needs to be de-escalated. All mediators need really to invest in the escalation, look at the political solution as the priority, and only then intervene against armed groups when they do not commit to the, to the political settlement. Dr. Felix Ndahinda, your points are well taken. Thank you so much for your...